encyclopedia, a book or set of books providing information on all or many branches of knowledge, generally in articles alphabetically arranged. Luke Burbank takes us to C for cover story. Americans are awash in information. Most of us walk around with devices that give us instant access to all the knowledge in human history. For me, this is where it all began. But before you could Google it, and long before we met Alexa, there was Britannica. You think of one of the great inventions in the history of books, and that is the encyclopedia. I learned how to write by copying articles out of Britannica. And Ted Pappas is executive that. editor of Encyclopedia of Britannica. This is an original first edition of Britannica. Which turns 250 years old this month. Founded in 1768 in Edinburgh, Scotland, Britannica was the brainchild of Colin McFarquhar, a printer, and Andrew Bell, an engraver. Also, they had an editor named William Smelly. William Smelly was a great editor. He was a very learned man. The only problem? His wonderful capacity for drinking. And yet, somehow, these two men with no formal training and one very drunk editor managed to write and publish the first edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica. It was useful, combining scholarship with, with practical information. And some guesses. A very short article in California here, our entry from 1768, spells California with two L's, and says, it's a large country of the West Indies. It is uncertain whether it be a peninsula or an island. From those humble and somewhat factually challenged roots grew a great tree of knowledge. This is knowledge in depth large authoritative essays. Considered by many to be the definitive resource of information over the years. Just think of it. It's a device by which all the knowledge, or most of the knowledge of the world at any one given time, is collected in one place. But there were also challenging times for the company. The Great Depression of the 1930s, for example. Folks did not have disposable income, a lot of it to spend on encyclopedias. Britannica had to find a way to stay relevant. Enter the Answer Girls, an elite core of women who would research and answer any question a Britannica owner might have. So you would write your question on a postcard, attach one of these stamps, and then Britannica in return, one of the women from the research center would type up and research up to a 10,000 word report as an answer to your question. Reference, Miss Watson. In fact, Catherine Hepburn's character I in Desk Set, the old farmer's almanac for this, if not US weather in is said to be modeled on the answer girl's director. This is from the Bible. Then there's the whole set club, people who've read an entire edition of the books, including George Bernard Shaw, Tesla founder Elon Musk, it is like the Mount Everest of knowledge. And writer A.J. Jacobs. How long does that take? That took about a year and a half. Uh, and reading six hours a day, uh, every day. The hardest part, he says, was actually trying to keep all those facts and figures to himself. I had all this knowledge. I kind of wanted to share it. And my wife started to find me one dollar, penalized me one dollar for every irrelevant fact I inserted into conversation. But she would say, like, you know, I have, uh, oh, I have a headache, and I would, I would throw in, oh, you know, the Bayer Aspirin Company patented uh, heroin uh, back in 1898. And then she would be like, well, that's a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> have you looked at one of those before? No. These days, yeah. it's yeah. rare okay. that Why students, not? like these fifth graders at Eisenhower Academy wow. in Joliet, yeah. Illinois, would even pick up a physical copy of Britannica. When I first saw it, I was kind of amazed because it was kind of a, of a variety of everything, because on this page you see animals, people, ancient illustrations. I immediately went, went this literally looks like uh, Wikipedia. Of course, the information on Wikipedia could come from anywhere. 
but it's actually relatively reliable compared to what else is out there. You know, with great power comes great responsibility kind of thing. Which is where David Mickelson comes in. My initial goal was to be like this Encyclopedia Britannica for urban legends. Mickelson runs fact-checking website Snopes.com from a tiny office in his home in Tacoma, Washington. The site started as a hobby, debunking odd rumors, if you can believe it, about Walt Disney. Was he frozen, by the way? No, he, no, he wasn't. But some 25 years later, the page gets around 20 million visitors per month, people hoping to separate fiction from fact. The very idea of what the objective facts of our world are yes. are really up for debate right now. Well, some people you're just never going to reach or never going to convince. That the, you know, the people who are willing to take a, a critical or a skeptical look at something are the ones that you need to reach. And those are the people Britannica is hoping it can still reach through its various online tools. The hope and idea, really, being that now, maybe more than ever, facts actually do matter, and not all information is created equal. So you guys are, are really trying to sort of fight the good fight of putting real information into the world. Absolutely, we're trying to surface and bring to people. We're not gonna wait for folks to come to us. We've done it for 250 years, I think we'll do it for another two and a half centuries.